Hello, Las Vegas, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Golf at the Park, Angel Park Golf Club's weekly interview show. Thanks for liking, commenting, and most importantly, subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, this week, I'm really excited. We've got our guest in today, Melosi Tangisala. Yes, sir. What's up, Melosi? What up, Jen? <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Our show, as you know, is about golfers and golf stories, but it's turned into a show about golfers and their golf stories and content, both consumption and production thereof. And Melosi's a really fun story on both counts. So we're going to jump right into it. And uh, well, first, I think I should thank um, both Mike, the video wizard, for setting up this new microphone setup. We're going to start trying where you can see our faces a little bit better. We're trying to make improvements. And I want to thank Big Matt for introducing Melosi yes. and I. Yeah, we'll probably get to that a little bit later, too. But on that note, let's just start at the top, amigo. Um, what age and who introduced you to golf? Um, so I was five years old when I started golfing. My dad, he was getting into golf when I was born, basically. And he's the one who motivated me, and he's the one who bought me my first little junior set of clubs. So five years old. Five years old is when I started going like more with my dad to the range, or I would go sit in the golf cart with him. He would let me drive the golf cart. And so, yeah, I was five years old when I started golfing. and But baseball was my, my sport. That was the one I took the most serious. Like I played comp leagues all throughout – so like little, little league, league it's all the way to like sophomore year of high school. Baseball was more of your sport than golf, yeah. but you're playing both of them. Yeah. So did you find that that helped you with your baseball swing and your golf swing? People that play baseball only tend to have a tough, tough transition. But how was that for you learning both at the same time? Um, really for me, yes, there's a little bit of difference. But my dad has always said, use baseball in your golf swing and use your golf swing in your baseball swing. That's interesting. Right? Mainly because with golf, I have I owe all of my power, my speed to, uh, to baseball. But with baseball, I use my quick hands um, in, in the game of – or golf into baseball. Just being able to release the bat and snap earlier. And, you know, that's just hand-eye coordination as well with baseball but I started I started uh, baseball very young and I stopped when I was a sophomore just to focus on golf yeah so I I know where golf ends up taking you but but tell us a little bit about that transition I think you told me earlier it was sophomore year so sophomore year you switch from baseball to golf and how's that go how's your golf playing golf at high school how's that career go uh, basically was my dad's like hey dude we need to figure out what sport is going to get you a higher education which one's going to give you the best scholarship money and golf was just the one i was better at it anyways and it's individual sport so it's like you can't have anyone to you know back you up right in anything and so junior years when i started taking golf to the next level of playing in more uh, ujga events um so not just high school golf you're playing yeah. competitively against other other kids from the yep. state of utah we would travel, my dad and I, throughout all of the state to go play. That's the best way to get looked at by um, college scouts. And, yeah, it wasn't until junior and senior year where I started to get really good at golf. Yeah, tell us a little bit about some of your favorite highlights or, or things from high school that you remember. Um, I won my very first high school golf tournament when I was a junior. I shot 72 at the barn. This one golf, or no, 71. My buddy who, um, how his fun! His name's Cage Schuler. He shot 72, so it was super fun because him and I were competing for the for the 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 number one spot. Right. And that was my first win ever, and it was my only win in high school. I didn't win anything after that except for with my team. We took the second in state my sophomore and junior year oh wow so yeah. you guys had a good team yeah we did and then we took third our senior year unfortunately we, we choked on our last day so and i know that you end up in college golf but then you take uh you take time to go on a mission tell yep. us a little bit about that right out of high school yeah so i was 18 when i went to el salvador for two years El salvador yeah what was that like Oh, it was scary. Um, just because it was a foreign ling or foreign country, foreign language. I didn't speak any Spanish. I remember before I went on my mission, I was like, "Mom, I, I really did not want to go anywhere Spanish speaking." I don't know what it was, right? But then I came home, and Spanish is like my second language now. Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. And so, anyways, then when I came home from my mission, I I missed the I missed the ball when I swung. You told like, me about this. Um, 
So, so you were gone for two years and you didn't pick up a club. No. Right, because there's no golf. No. So you came back and I think you said I should show you the video. So you recorded yourself doing yes. it. Yes, <laughs> my dad videoed it for me. My first swing lined up and I just swung like here's the ball and I missed it on the outside. Wow. Not even close, right? And I whiffed it so bad. And then when I made contact with it, I topped it. And my dad's like, you got to play it. Like, no, like, you're, you're, wow. you're hitting three right there. <laughs> I'm just like, come on, man. <laughs> Why you got to be like that? And so, but yeah, after that, I was only two weeks um, in Utah before I went straight to Wyoming to go play college golf. Yeah. So how'd that happen? How'd you, so you came right off your mission and then straight to, so yeah. to college golf, how, yeah. how, how was that so seamless? So I, when I was in my mission, I actually got the offer to go play at, in Wyoming because no one wanted to hold the scholarship for me. Right. Um, for two years. For two years. So I was like, it makes sense. Right. And so anyways, I was on my mission when I got the offer. Two weeks later, I had to go to college. I played in my first ever college event and my first tournament back from, you know, tournament golf. And I won. <laughs> So yeah. so you got over missing I the ball pretty quick. Got over missing the ball Your pretty quick. Your first tournament you I won. I won individually and as a team we won it. And you hadn't won since your sophomore year of high school? Yep. No, junior, yeah, junior, <laughs> junior year, year. Yeah, yeah, junior and I won the tournament individually I shot 69-72. It was awesome. How fun. Yeah. That's got to be one of the best rounds of of your life, most oh, yeah. favorite. Oh yeah. yeah, it's a round that I will always remember. I still remember hitting the one shot that got me into the lead. It was on number 10 at um, Cottonwood Golf Course, Cottonwood Country Club in Torrington, Wyoming. Uh I was stuck behind a tree. I had 208, and I hit a slice five iron around this tree. Oh. Put it to like six feet, dropped the eagle. So sick. Come on now. (laughs) I love those stories. Yeah, that was fun. That's what this is all about. So, um, and then college, you don't end up playing too much longer, and you get out of the game for a while, right? Yeah. So tell us about your 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 transition of or time where you're not necessarily playing golf so much. So I, I yeah I quit college golf just because I got burned out of the sport, and in twenty that was in 2019 basically 2019 2020 I kind of stopped playing golf. It wasn't until that like COVID kind of hit where later in that year of 2020, my buddies were like, hey. We work at a uh, Coral Canyon Golf Course. You want to come and you're living in St. George yeah, at this point. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. I moved down to St. George to be an ambassador at Dixie State University, um, which is now called Utah Tech. Utah Tech. Yeah. And then I just I stopped playing. I met my wife down there, and she didn't know I golfed like that, you know, crazy. Um, but it wasn't until my buddies said, hey, let's go start golfing together. And we started playing a ton of golf. And now, so. when you start playing, um, I know this story uh, a little bit, but I want to take you back first. Um, when did you start consuming golf content, and and how? What what were you consuming? What were you into? So it was when I was in college golf when like Garrett Clark was on YouTube doing like long form um, videos before Good Good. Yeah, yeah. So I was watching like, like Garrett Clark or GM Golf. And he was, it was so fun to watch him play because, you know, he's kind of like around the same age as me and he's really good. So it's like, all right, I can compete with him. Yeah. And so I started, you know, taking it all, all in 2018, 2019. And then, you know, I kind of stopped, you know, playing golf, but I still love to watch. You were still consuming yeah, it. still watching. And was it mostly long form content on YouTube? Yeah. That was what you liked the yeah. most at that point. I don't think social media golf was super big at right, this time. Right, it was just starting. It was just those, you know, those guys, Garrett, Micah, Matt, Steve, yep. and all those guys were kind of like the, the OGs of it. And yeah. Stuff. And so 2020 you're getting back into it it's the pandemic golf's booming so crazy the other thing that's booming is social media and uh tiktok for sure instagram and and golf so many people are golfing and then they're sharing content of them golfing and Mm -hmm. then people are getting addicted to everybody's content yeah and it it's snowballed over these last couple of years how did you start um filming your own and what what was your tell us take us through those first couple of steps so it's funny, I actually didn't start doing social media golf on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. I started on Snapchat. Like This is the first time we've had anybody who's started or even used, I haven't even heard of Snapchat golf. Yeah, and it's not even like crazy big, right? And it was only because I was too scared to go post it anywhere else. 
And it's just like on Snapchat, it's just my people. I actually started a page on there called like Big Sticks. Uh huh. So it was called. And only like my close friends that wanted to join the page, they could. And it was just like a separate story, right? And we would just film each other. It's like this. Right? Oh, he has a putt for birdie. <laughs> oh, he's going to miss it. You know, and like we just filmed everything on Snapchat. And did you find people were gravitating towards it? Yeah, just like all of my friends from high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, my buddies would, you know, they would see it and they showed their friends. And so it wasn't anything crazy. It was more so just us showing off. And this was at the time when Coral Canyon was at like, it's like worst. And I've been with Coral Canyon. I'll talk more about it later since that day. Like, oh, I, wow. I love that course. And now it's, you know, it's really good. Yeah. Um, I know that we're going to talk about how you started your, your Instagram and then your YouTube channels <clears throat> in, a, in a minute. But you mentioned St. George. And I know part of the reason you started your, your channels was um, as much about showcasing your voice and your story as it was St. George. Yep. And St. George Golf specifically. Yep. So tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, St. George is one of my favorite places in Utah to golf, right? Just because it's year-round golf, it's warm, and in the summers it's hot, it hurts, like kind of down here, right? But Coral Canyon has been the course that is, it's my home course. I love Coral Canyon. I've been with them since, since you know, the end of the pandemic. And we just, Marco Leone, he's the head pro there, and he's he's one of the boys. Like, we, yeah. like we would hang out with Marco, if we, you know, like, if we could all the time. He has his separate friends, right? But when, when we're with him, he's one of the boys, right? Anyways, but some of the hidden gems out there in St. George, of course, everyone knows Sand Hollow, Copper Rock. The ledges, you're good. The ledges, golf course, right? Coral Canyon, but some of the hidden gems are like Green Springs Golf Course. It's like in Washington County. It's a public course. It's like 85 bucks to play. Green Springs is awesome, and their conditions are phenomenal. Their greens roll so good. It's ridiculous. That's fun. Yeah, super fun. Um, Michael Sweets is the head pro or uh, the head pro out there. He keeps it. He keeps it clean. So, anyways, and then there's other courses like Sky Mountain. That's like another, it's a smaller version of San Hollow, I guess, in Coral Canyon. It's out in the desert, red rock everywhere. Their driving range is super cool. Um, but then a really close hidden gem that not everyone knows about in St. George, but not anyone goes and plays it when they come and visit, is Dixie Red Hills. Like, it's a nine-hole course, OGs, you have to walk it. Like, you don't take a cart, right? You you walk you got to walk it. You have to walk it. It's just one of those fun courses. That's fun. Nine holes. That The OGs will walk cloud nine here, and I think that's that's so cool. Yeah. That, yeah. Walking <clears throat> walking is, is a really fun part of the game. Yeah. Random Golf Club mixes that in. It, it's, it's neat. Okay, so you have this um, interest in content. You have this desire to um, maybe follow in the footsteps of some of the guys that you that you like, and you have St. George that you want to talk us into how the Melosi channels start and what your idea was and, and how you just started doing content and when. Yeah, so it started last year, October of 2022. Wow, recently. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I work with Vivint um, Smart Home, so I, I spend five months out of the year knocking doors. So I have seven months where I'm not working. So I was like, you know what? Why not? Like, why not me? And I had no intentions of it turning into this. It was more so I just wanted to show off St. George, and I want to show off that short people can golf. And, and, big, <laughs> and big dudes. Like, How like, tall are you? I'm five foot four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyways, yeah, I started. And realistically, like I said, it was just to show off my game, show off the, the city. And that's kind of how it all started. right? I, I reached out to a couple of my favorite influencers, uh, like Mac Boucher. Mm -hmm. He's from Canada. He's a unique dude. And he plays the game so cool. It's fun to watch him golf. You just get so like, why are you hooking it 40 yards around a tree when you could just hit it straight? Right. But that's just his way of golf, right? And, um, you know, that's just how I wanted to do it. And that's how I did things. And one thing led to another. And here we are. Well, let's talk a little bit about him because I think this is neat. Um, one of the the guys that you modeled your your My idea page, out yeah. of. And what's what's going on with that now? It's funny that you mentioned that because <clears throat> last week – for the first time ever, I talked to him on the phone. He called me on Instagram, and that's just like, 
I don't know what it was, but like. So he he reached out to you. Yeah, yeah, and it was so cool because like we've messaged you know back and forth. You know, I told him, hey, I'm going to be in Canada. I would love to meet you. But just, you know, he's he's traveling a lot, and this timing didn't happen, but we're going to make it work here soon. How fun. And so, yeah, he's, he's a stud. <clears throat> That's one of the neat things about this show that I've gotten to see happen a couple of times, you know, with the Random Golf Club guys getting to meet Eric Anders Lang and, and Rocky getting to meet Joey Coldcuts and Bob and, and these guys who <clears throat> kind of created their – yeah their accounts and their brands um, in these images and, and models of these yep. other guys. Um, but, but containing your own voice, your own story, yeah. your own personality, that's the way it, it always oh, yeah. ends up being the best. Yeah. So take me through um, your content production. Um, tell me a little bit about er, some early pieces that you did because you grew pretty fast. Let's talk about that too. Yeah. Um, so I remember I started in October, right? I hit my first 1,000 followers January 22nd. Yeah, and you did something cool, I remember. Yeah, I did a giveaway, and I just I ordered Melosi Golf t-shirts, like a long sleeve and a hoodie and a sleeve of golf balls. And I remember I'm like, you know what? Like this, My way of saying thank you to everyone, it wasn't sponsored by anyone. I just said, hey, 1,000 followers, like – comment subscribe or like comment and like follow me if you want this right yeah and from january 22nd to february 28th i had 10,000 followers so in a month in a month <clears throat> i hit 10,000 you, followers you gained 900% yeah wow don't know how don't know why it just happened um, was it any any one piece that you found go viral or was it just consistency i had one video that hit like over 200,000 views. So that made people come and, yeah, and follow. Yeah, that got me the traction. And then after that, I just took the momentum and I wrote it. And it was just consistency. Yeah, it was posting two times a day. And, you know, not... And that's the thing. People try to post and they try so hard to perfect it. It's not supposed to be perfect. Post how how you would like it. Well, because you're learning, right, too, yeah. as as we go. You're only an hour, uh, a year into this to, let's let's do both. Let's talk about both the creative process um, and the technical process. Um, how do you go about coming up with your ideas for different kinds of content? I watch a lot of videos for short form on Instagram. And I see someone do it. I'm like, hey, I want to make it like that, but with my personality. Cut and paste that idea yep, yep. with with your story and your your brand exactly your, yourself. Like when I see Garrett Clark hit a stinger video, I'm like, that was cool. I love him, so I want to try. I'll to go do, do it. that exactly. Yeah. No, so, that's that's smart. Yeah. So let's talk about production then. How how are you filming stuff? Do you have a team? Are you doing it all yourself? How do you how do you produce it? So I do everything by myself for right now, right? Just on short form. I use this device, <laughs> just that, just this for all my filming. It's so dumb how easy it is. It's interesting. This show is done all on, on an iPhone and dumped down. Um, so what are you editing on? I do all of my editing for shot tracers. I do that on my computer. So I airdrop all my photos or my videos to my computer. Yep. I do on Shot Tracer Pro. Then I airdrop them back to my phone just because I don't know how to use any other software except for CapCut. And I use all on my phone. I just trim, cut, split, put all the words on there. Then export it to my photo gallery, post it. <laughs> I do everything in Final Cut, and, and then CapCut comes out, and I'm like, oh, they're giving so many shortcuts and easier ways to do this stuff. Yeah. CapCut's crazy good. See, and Final Cut Pro, that was one of my options. I'm like, do I do this? Do I do DaVinci? Do I, you know, Adobe? Go there are a bunch of different ways to and do right it. And right now, I have to learn how to use Adobe for YouTube because I'm, I'm coming out with like all my YouTube stuff soon. And I, you, that's just the only way to do it where it looks better so your youtube channel is more new yes like i, I have like two videos posted but i did those videos on my phone yeah and I'm like, it works right i sure. filmed everything on my phone but i just bought a camera that i'm like this camera is really nice it's a, a panasonic so you're stepping up yeah, yeah no to say what kind of it is the panasonic um hc or uh yeah hcx 1500 and it zooms 32 times Wow. So, like, you can see your ball land from the tee box. Oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So those will be fun. We'll keep an eye out for, for your YouTube content. Um, let's take us through uh, 
what kind of content you like to consume now? Are you still YouTube or what are, what are you, are you more short form? Uh, I'm probably a good 50, 50 right now. Whenever I just want to relax and just chill out, I'll watch like Garrett's channel, Garrett, uh, GM golf. Um, I watch a lot of Bob does sports now, yep. a lot of good, good. Um, so I'm still watching a ton of videos like long form, but whenever I need ideas or I want to see what's going on, I'll watch um, those short guys. form. Yeah. On <clears throat> Instagram. And I, I have a ton of people that I watch, uh, like, you know, short game Kings. Uh, I do. Yeah. yeah Daniel yeah. Sloaner. He was actually a really big help for me when I, um, was in between 1000 and 10,000 followers. And he kind of took me under his wing and saying, hey, dude, start getting – and he gave me the details of how to work short-form or short form videos. It's like you need to make them quicker. You need to cut out the fluff. Use this use this trending audio, right? And he's like – he was kind of a, a big help for me in growing a little bit better and faster. And so it was actually funny. I actually golfed with him when I only had like maybe – 11,000 followers. How'd that introduction happen? I reached out to him on Instagram and said, hey, I'm going to be so in cool. San Diego. Would love to golf with you. He invited me to his uh, his country club. He, you know, he, he paid for my round. He was just a solid dude. And he's actually going to come visit me this week. Oh, that's so, so yeah, cool. I'm excited. Or no, not, not this week. Sorry. In two weeks. He's coming to visit me in, uh, in St. George. And You've got all places. sorts of good stuff cooking. Yeah, You've I'm excited. You've got to be excited. Oh, yeah. He's a good man. <clears throat> I also want to thank you for coming down. Uh, we'll get back to Big Matt now. Um, I want to know a little bit about how you guys met. Um, yes. But uh, I just wanted to thank you for coming down and putting your piece in for our oh, contest. Yeah. Angel Park is more than a golf course. That That's was uh, really fun for us that you did that. So we appreciate it. Anytime. Um, is, that, is that one of your only times you've been at Angel Park? Tell us any Angel Park history you have. That was the first time. <clears throat> it was my first time ever playing here. I've only played her once. And it is one of my favorite courses in, in Las Vegas. Oh, thank you. That We love hearing that. Just because of the maintenance on it. The course is, is looking so good. We're in good shape. Yeah. And it's like whenever you go to a golf course that is is pretty known pretty like pretty highly. Like Angel Park is a pretty big. Sure. Like, it's huge. You got 36 holes here. You got a huge night range. And you guys have a par three course. And the par three is lit at night too. Cloud nine. Yeah. yeah. Like like you don't have that at most courses. This is a resort style course that's not a like a – like right. hotels on it, right? Um, but yeah, so I actually met Big Matt here for the first time in person because I met Matt like uh, just through social media, maybe like nine, eight months ago or something like that, when we kind of get more connected. But yeah, this is the first time I've been to Angel Park, and it will not be the last. Oh, fun! I love that. Like I want to come here and play more. I haven't even played the full course yet. Well, we got to get you out, and so I'm excited. Um, Let's talk about clubs. What kind of clubs did you start on? What do you, what do you, what's in your bag now? What kind of progression have you gone through with golf clubs? So I started out with, of course, uh, my dad bought me some juniors, like Wilson set growing up. But the first set I really had was a Nike VR Pro combo set. And it had the Diablo, Callaway Diablo driver that I used a couple times before. My dad's like, here, just use my ping, my ping driver. Um, and that was like my freshman and sophomore year and then i finally got a, a ping g20 driver and i had that all throughout high school college um it wasn't until when i got to college after i won my first tournament there i um switched over to the titleist clubs okay so i have all titleists you know then um titleist 718s the blades yep all like three iron to pitching wedge and then at the time it was a seven sm6 titleist vokies yep, sm6 the vokies um, but now I still have the Titleist irons. I have the 620 MBs mixed in with the T100 irons. And so I love them. And then just the Vokey wedges. And I have a Callaway driver right now, the Paradigm, just because I broke my my Stealth uh, like a month ago or two weeks ago. How'd you break it? Um, I, I was doing speed training in a facility called the T-Box. That's one of the indoor facilities I go to in, in St. George. Super awesome. Has a gym and everything. Anyways, I snapped it on my shoulder oh. doing speed training. And so just because I was trying to hit, you know, 190 ball speed, and I I just couldn't get it, and I was pissed, and then it just snapped on me. Oh, no. <laughs> so. Well, that's no fun. What about gear? Um, I see you've got pins and aces stuff on. Yes. Are you loyal to brands? 
I am loyal to one brand, and that is uh, Chubby's for my shorts, like my bottoms. So you're working with Chubby's, I'm guessing? Yes. So we'll have tags beneath us for, for them. Shout out Chubby's. Tell yes. us about them, how you met them, and why you like them. So Chubby's, his name is Travis. He reached out to me on I Instagram. I love the name. Yeah. He's like, hey, man, you're cool. I'm like, Travis, you're cool. He's like, <laughs> we need to get you some gear. I'm like, okay. And um, it, what I like most about the Chubby shorts at the time is – they actually had the length I wanted. It was four inches. I'm five foot four, so I'm short. Right. Very short, right? And um, anyways, it went just right above my knee versus everything else, you know, looks like I'm wearing capris. Just because yeah. I am so short. And so anyways, I have that. Pins and Aces, they've always been supporting me throughout my entire golf uh, golf channel career. Journey, yeah. Right, journey. And I, I wear their tops, their hats everywhere. They're just so comfortable. Yeah. We've got and pins so. and aces out of the golf shop. We love them. Um, you really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're. I've good. got a couple pins and aces shirts. They, they're good they make people. a good. Yeah, they make a good shirt. Um, <clears throat> well, that's fun. Uh, let's talk about something that is a little bit more difficult, um, possibly or not as fun. Um, let's talk about things that maybe you don't like about golf. Uh, you've been in golf since you were five. Are there things that you would change? You ever thought about or or things that you would do different? So when I was in Canada, something I did like uh, that they did out there, they had a like a sign, right, that said, all right, whatever your handicap is, that's what tee box you have to play. I think if you're starting out golf, you should always start where you, you know, where your skill level is, right? And it picks up uh, pace of play because that's, of course, that's what everyone's going to say is like, we want to speed up the pace of pace play. Pace of play. Um, and so, but my, ultimately the third one I would say, if, if I could change the way of golf is not to take it so serious, have fun. Like, I'm sure you, you guys get that a lot here. We get that answer a lot. Um, just annoyance of, of playing with people that aren't having a good time. Everybody's yeah. out there to have a good time. Don't, like, don't be upset and ruin it for everybody else. Like how awkward is it when the guy that is even par and he misses, you know, a four footer for Bowie and he doubles and he just throws his putter has a tantrum it's like come on man right like, why nope. are you that way <laughs> i i totally get it and agree yeah um <clears throat> what's your favorite thing about golf well what it used to be was me like competing against my dad and beating him because i i remember the day i beat my dad the day i outdrove my dad it was the best feeling ever right beating my little brother like all that competition used to be what i loved most about it but over the years, it's changed, and it's meeting new people. The game introduces you to so many people. Matt introduced me to you, right? Yeah. Now, we have a, a good friendship, right? Yep. I you know, I, I get to talk to some of the people who influenced me the most in golf, and like Mac Boucher, Garrett Clark. I talk to them on, on social media. And, so like, and then on top of that, meeting people at the golf course – like I signed some golf balls for some kids. How cool! That was the coolest thing. Like I was gonna ask you, when did you know that you you made it? Was was it signing golf balls for kids? I don't know. I'm not there yet. Well, I'm not there. Yeah, but, but like it, yeah. But when did you know that you had something? Um, I was think it ten thousand? Probably closer to that because St. George is. It's. I don't think it's like that big, right? Because it's like a smaller town. The next town is Mesquite, Nevada, which is 45 minutes south. Or you go 45 minutes north, and it's Cedar City. Um, but, yeah, I think when, probably when I had, like, close to, like, 15,000, 20,000 is when people started to be like, hey, that's that guy. Or like, hey, are you are you Melosi? Like, yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny when people meet me in person, they're like, you really are, like, short. I'm like, I know. I say it in my videos. Like, <laughs> I am five foot four. And, like, when people, like, shake my hands, they're like, it's just funny. Because like, you, you know that in their eyes are like, <laughs> that's funny that's like, so good <laughs> it's true and so but yeah that's one of my favorite things is meeting people getting to golf with fans you know like i was in reno and i and i golfed with uh two guys that introduced me or inter introduced like, themselves introduced themselves to me like we'll get you on this course come play with us and it's just so cool to meet people that's fun and, you know it's 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 a humbling feeling it's so. a great answer you brought up your little brother can we talk about him a little bit i, oh, no. I feel like he's a a really interesting um story yes so let's let's uh let's tell it so maxi and i we grew up playing golf he's seven years younger than me he was better than me his senior year against like my senior year um but in 2022 he got in a ski accident 
I don't think I told you this before, but he like committed to go play college golf and everything like at um, Central Wyoming Community College. Oh, wow. College. So, so he, was, he was like already yeah. set. Anyways, he got in a ski accident, became paralyzed from the waist down. So he broke his or fractured his T12 or something like that in his spinal cord. And next thing you know, he's just, he can't, he can't walk. Right. I was like, what the heck? Dude? Like, why him? And I mean, tragedy. It, yeah, 18 years old. He didn't even finish, like, uh, he was still in high school when he uh, broke his back. And, you know, that, that whole thing happened. And now it's crazy to look at his life is it might be flipped to others, but to us it's the same. He still drives. He still plays golf. He's a seven handicap. Like, I know this is insane to me. Like he's so a single I wanna, digit. I want to talk about his, 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 car- his new career. Um, and I want to talk about how he's able to golf. Take us through that a little bit. So he has, it's called the Verticat and the Paramobile. The guy that actually um, created or invented these uh, golf carts for paraplegics, he lives here in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know that either. Anthony Nito or Anthony, I can't remember his last name. I need to do research, and we need to get him on the show. He's that'd be, the that'd coolest be so guy. so interesting. Oh, yeah. And the funny thing is, the first time I met Anthony was to pick up the Paramobile for my little brother. My parents bought it for him for Christmas. I didn't realize those things are kind of expensive. Oh, I, I can yeah, imagine. Yeah. Like, I was, I was like, well, yeah, really? I could buy a new car with this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I met Anthony, and he was just the nicest dude out of South, South Africa. Or, uh, yeah, South Africa is where he's from. And he took us to a restaurant here in town. It was me, my best friend, and, and our, our wives. And Anthony's is the coolest guy ever. So he got Maxi really big into, like, the Paramobile, the Verticat. It's what, you know, it's a new one that he, he designed. But it just lifts my little brother up completely to stand. Yep. It holds his knees in, and it straps around his waist. So he just turns. And there's a strap over his uh, his feet. Oh, okay. So it's just all upper body, and it's crazy how much speed he can create. Because he still hits the ball like 230, 240 off the wow. tee. Yeah. Because he was, he was hitting the ball like 300 plus before, and then now it's, it's, it's different. He has more, more hybrids and woods than he does irons. And I guess that makes sense, like right? I think, yeah. his, I think his highest iron or, yeah, highest iron would be, I think it's an eight iron. And then he has like a, a couple other yeah, hybrids. Yeah, six woods or hybrids. Yeah. yeah. Which that makes sense. I never knew you could. Yeah. <laughs> no, they make them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's inspiring and and really really cool. Um, he got to play Pinehurst this summer. Yes, he played in the Adaptive U.S. Open, and he won it for his division seated by like 19 strokes. So he won his seated division shot, at Pinehurst. Shot two wonder on in the, the U.S. Day. Open. Yeah. <laughs> First time playing ever, even like out How there too. How insane! Yeah, that's so fun. I know, and this is so cool to see him. Wow! Congrats to him. Yeah. Um, I would love to have him on the show. Oh, would you dude. talk to him about it? Oh, I yeah, would. that would be cool. I want to get him because he because Anthony lives here. So like Maxi, because Anthony has a bunch of things where Maxi can just get on the flight, come down here, and just use one of Anthony's uh, paramobiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come down. We'll play golf. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'll that reach out to Maxi. Great. Say, hey, dude. We yeah, got, we got this opportunity. That sounds cool. I would love to do that. You'd like him. He's funny. Um, well, that was fun, Melosi. Thank you so yeah. much. That's going to uh, bring us to the end of the first segment of the show. The second segment here is where we we call we play what we call a par five. We ask the same five questions to every okay. player um, or every guest on the show, and we come up with different answers, and we talk about them. So are you ready? I'm ready. It's a par five. Yep, par five. <laughs> five questions. Uh, question number one, what's your favorite golf movie? Um, favorite golf movie is The Greatest Game Ever Played with Shia LaBeouf. Great answer. Um, I will tell you that that gets brought up. Quite a bit more than I expected on this show. Really? Yeah. It's one of the most frequently given answers. Everything that the favorites are all kind of divided up. There's a Caddyshack crew, there's a 10 Cup crew, and there's a Happy Gilmore crew. But yeah. the one that keeps coming up with those three is the greatest game ever played. Yeah. When, when, do you remember when you first saw it? Do you remember how it affected you? It came out what? It's 20 years 20 old. 20 years old. Like six years old when it came out. I was probably like 10 like my later when toddler years yeah. when like I was like, all right, like I'm playing. An impressionable age yeah. and you're playing. Yeah, and I was playing golf, you know, and like I was like getting into like those youth clinics 
at like uh, our golf courses and my dad's like, hey, dude, you're kind of good at the sport. Like, let's go play a little tournament together and watching like Francis we met play and all that stuff on on the TV was super fun. Yep, and, winning the U.S. Open. It's and just crazy. Like, my favorite part in the movie is when his dad, because you know his dad is like super against it. His dad donates like a dollar or something like that to um, Francis for his uh, caddy and it was super cool. Yep. It's a heartfelt movie. It gets Emotional. you in your feels. Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, Seven Days in Utopia? No. Tell me about that. It's a, it's another golf movie. I can't remember the actors' names in it, but it's just like a hothead golfer who was a professional golfer loses his card. He just goes in this deep hole and then he gets sent to the city or town called like Utopia, and he like had to learn how to golf the correct way with like manners with respect it's another heartfelt movie for golf seven just, days in utopia yeah i love that i'll have to look that up yeah. we we get we get answers of, of films that i've never heard of and that's fun to go back and rewatch them <clears throat> or to watch them for the first time that's cool question number two shot number two what's your favorite golf club in your bag and why right now it's my putter it's always been my driver ever since i was a kid right just because i could hit the ball far but my putter is my favorite right now, just because I'm putting good. You're putting well. Yeah. What kind of putter are you hitting? I have, oh, I didn't say this earlier. I have the Scotty Cameron Phantom X55. So it's a mallet putter. I've had a blade my whole life, but just recently this year. You've switched and you've noticed you're putting better. Yeah. How fun. It's good. And I think the reason why is because I cut it down to 29 and a half inches. <laughs> That's great. So my eyes are over five the ball. Four. Yep, five foot four. <laughs> my eyes are over the ball a little bit better. And it's just a little bit easier for me to use. I feel more comfortable. And it's it's heavier, so I can I don't have to take such a long stroke. Yeah. And so and plus when you're putting in golf to practice, you can go to any golf course. And you can practice for whenever you want for free. So I was like, I'll just go do that. So yeah. I, I practice probably two to three times a week on just my short game. Do you have a least favorite club in your bag? Mm, weirdly enough, it's my nine iron. Yeah? It's only because I've been pulling it a lot lately. Don't know why, but every time I have like 150, it's like 160 yards, I'm like, oh, man. You'd rather either push a wedge or, or yeah, or exactly, an easy Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's funny because I've actually never like admitted that out loud <laughs> until this very <laughs> like. That's what I'm here to do. I'm yeah. here to, to bring out all your secrets. So, yeah, my nine iron. Um, I want to talk about uh, maybe the most uh, special club in your bag. Why don't you tell us about your two iron? Oh, yes. So my two iron is actually a Mizuno T-Zod. 18 degrees, and it was my father's uh, hole-in-one club. So and your dad made an ace with on, a two iron. On a par four. <laughs> on a par four? 200 and like, I think he said 244 yards or something like that. It was in Idaho. So it was like a smaller uh -huh. smaller course, but it was a par four, and he made a hole-in-one on it. And so I have the two iron with me just because he, you know, he's he can't hit it as well anymore. So I was like, I'll take it, and I can smack this thing like no one's business. Um, but yeah, I play with that thing. It's my fairway finder. Whenever I'm not comfortable with a driver or something like that and I need to carry it, I use my two iron. Albatross club. I love yeah, that. So. Um, and you mentioned it was your dad's hole in one club. Do you get to play I, and you play with your brother? Do you still play with your dad a lot? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's so fun because like seeing him get a little bit older, you know, it's, it's like at that point where, you know, like we're at that stage in our lives where it's like our parents are starting to hit that age, you know. Um, and But he's still an athlete. He's crazy good. But it's, it's hard to see him like struggle sometimes yeah. golfing because I'm just like, man, like he normally like hits the ball further or he normally hits the ball straighter. But his one thing that my dad is to this day will always be better than me is his short game. Yeah. He can get up and down from anywhere. And it's just well anywhere I should say anywhere under a hundred yards. That covers a lot of yeah. that covers a lot of holes and in so, your game. And I bet he has less than he averages probably less than thirty putts per round. So he probably averages like fourteen per wow. round. Yeah. That's that's so cool. He he I, I haven't seen him three putts since high school. Don't wow. Know, don't know why. I don't know if he's hiding it from me, but like <laughs> my dad can putt. That's that's awesome. Shout out pops. Yeah. Um, question number three. What's your dream foursome? I'm going to give you three people, any three people, alive or dead, um, to pick to go play around a golf with. Who are you picking, and where are you going to go play golf? What golf course? 
So I know what golf course I want to play first. Okay. I want to play Hill Air Force Base, Hubbard. Hubbard. It's, it's our home course in Layton, Utah, where I grew up playing with my dad and my little brother, Maxie. That's where we had countless memories of like, hey, let's go to this bunker. Okay, let's go to this, you know. Oh, and just and work it out Be- on the yeah, golf course. Because that course is, you have to know someone to get on the golf course. It's not like a country club, but it's it's portrayed to be like that because you have to have someone who is in the military or works on Hill Air Force Base. Anyway, so it was always open, and we would spend hours there. My dad got me an ID to when I can go in there whenever I wanted. How fun. But when I turned uh, 21, I think it expired or something like that. But anyways, I would go to Hill Air Force Base with my dad, my little brother, and my future son. And That's a be great answer. Yeah, so Are be... you expecting? No, 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 oh, no kids. Even better so answer. everyone, calm down over there. <laughs> no, no need to get into the business. Uh, um, no kids yet. That's an even better answer. The first time we've had a uh, non-living person uh, referenced or brought up from from past tense. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like you're like like either dead or alive. I'm like what if they're not born? That's yet? great. <laughs> I, I love that answer. We always get the best answers. Question number four: What's your aiming? fluid what are you drinking when you're out on the golf course um i don't drink alcohol so i drink a lot of water and a lot of gatorade on the course so you don't drink at all no no so that makes sense yeah yeah Yeah. um a lot of people who say water and gatorade um are also very cognizant of like caffeine and sugar do you find yourself um being that constrictive or or vigilant not really i probably have like like maybe one Gatorade on the course, and then I just fill that bottle up with water. Just drink water. <laughs> yeah, at like whenever I see it's at Coral at Coral Canyon, they have um, like water stations at like almost like every other hole or something like that because it gets so hot there. You just fill it up. And you just drink water. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And that's the best thing to drink. Um, always is the best answer. Yeah. Question number five, our last question. That's it. Um, so sorry to see you go, uh, but <clears throat> this one's kind of interesting. I I don't know what you're going to answer here. Um, because I've got a take on you, and it's always fun to see if we're wrong. Um, question number five, how do you deal with anger on the golf course? Have you, um, uh, are you a club thrower? Are you a club snapper? I like that grin. Okay. Are, uh, how, do you, how do you deal with your anger on a golf course? Because golfers tend to like repeat the same habits or do the same things. True. Would you want 17-year-old Mo or 26-year-old Mo answer? Oh, I want both. Okay. I like that you have growth, it sounds like. <laughs> yes. So when I was in high school, like sophomore year, junior year, I was watching my senior like friends. They would get so mad over like little putts. You know, they would throw their clubs. They would just, you know, be so angry all the time. And they would still shoot like one or two over. It's like, okay. So that gave me the, you know, the, what do you call it? The idea that I need to be angry too. So my my uh, junior year, I, I got so mad over missing a putt. I remember specifically, I was playing at Logan Country Club in a regional tournament, and I was on hole 10. I push-faded my ball a little bit to the trees, but it hit off a tree, went back into the fairway. I didn't see that, and I hit my club against my golf bag. Oh. And it snapped. And my dad was behind us watching, and... This is at that moment when I realized I had an anger issue on the golf course because my dad looked at me. He just waved. I'll see you at home. And he left, and I had to find a ride home. He like, turned and walked yeah. away. And it was one of those lessons, uh, one of those moments where I'm like, man, dude, why am I, like, who am I? Why am I this way? And that was the day where I just I You stopped. disappointed your dad. It's crushing. Yeah. And, like, seeing him, you know, because he loves me. He's my biggest supporter. That's the last thing I want to do is to make him upset. And I remember when I came home, my mom's like, you should probably go upstairs and talk to dad. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyways, next week I had to ask my dad to borrow his driver <laughs> for uh, for state comp or for state uh, championship. Did he and give it to you? He said no. And then the morning, <laughs> the next morning when I had to go, he's like, hey, just take it. And so I was very, He just made you squirm a little bit. Yeah. I was very, very careful with it. So. <laughs> but now that I am like 26 years old, I'm, I'm in the game. It's kind of like what I said earlier about the guys that take it too serious. Like golf is such a fun game if you let it be. If you let the you know, the wannabe pro in you come out, that's just when it's just like, man, like, why are you golfing? Like, you're just going to get angry over missing, 
you know, a two foot for par or something like that. Yeah. Like now that whenever I make a double bogey, it's like, let's move on. You can shrug it off. I'm actually more excited when I make a double bogey because I can post it on social media and people be like, okay, he's real. And yeah. And <laughs> yeah. you know that those are <laughs> su- self-deprecating is, yeah, is every like, bit as successful as, exactly. as, as anything else. Cause people like to see those bad holes, you know? And, That's right. And so I'm like, all right. Sweet. I have a good hold to show everyone. Mo, this was rad. Oh, that was fun. Thank, Thank you for you. coming in, man. I appreciate no, it. We had fun. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week. Until next time, hit them straight from your friends at Angel Park Golf Club. Cheers. Peace. <laughs> that was great. That was awesome. Oh, I appreciate you, Jed. <laughs>